you put your configuration in a property file in your Spring Boot application, and then you built your application, the property file is sitting inside your jar. Now, what if you want to change it later? Do you have to uncompress the jar and mess with the files? Well, no. You can have your Spring Boot application with the jar intact, look at configuration outside without having to do anything else to the jar itself. I'll show you how in this tutorial. All right, so here is my project where I have my SRC and uh, my Spring Boot project here. It can be any Spring Boot project, it really doesn't matter. Now I can switch to my target, which is what is created by doing a Maven build or a Maven install. You see this, there is a, a jar file that's created, Spring Boot config 1.0.0.1 snapshot.jar. This is a jar that's built by the Maven command. This is what I need to hand over to somebody who's deploying this to production. And they say, hey, go run this jar file and they'll do a Java dash jar and the name of the jar file. If you don't know how to run a jar file directly, check out this video, which is linked in the card here. But basically you can run this jar file and the application or properties is sitting there. Now you give this to somebody, they say, okay, I'm gonna run this. But now you realize that you have to change the value in something that's in the application or properties file. How do you do that? Now let's demonstrate, okay? I'm gonna copy this jar file name and I'm going to run this here. Java dash jar and then the name, okay? Now, if I were to run this directly like this, what's gonna happen is the value that the Spring Boot application is gonna pick up is what's in the application or properties file. But what if I wanna override it? I could of course extract the jar, edit the properties file and then zip it back again and then run it again, but that's tedious. Here's another thing I can do. I can create a new application.properties file at the same location as the jar. Notice here, I'm not creating this file inside the jar. I'm creating it this in the same path that the jar exists, okay? And notice what happens. I'm gonna copy the same property that's in the application.properties my.greeting equals hello world. I'm gonna add this, but with a change. I'm gonna change this to hello world from external property file. Okay, so I've created a new application.properties file in the same location as the jar, and notice what happens if I run it now. I'm gonna do a java-jar and then the name of the jar file. It's gonna run like before. Now what Spring is gonna do is as the application is starting up, it's gonna apply all the properties in the application or properties file in inside the jar, but then it notices, hey, hang on a second, there is this another application or properties at the same location as a jar, which is external. So what it's gonna do is it's actually gonna apply it and it's gonna override what's inside the jar. So if I were to access this URL and uh, refresh the page, you notice here, it's actually pulling up the value from that external property file, okay? So what you have as a property file outside the jar overrides what's inside the jar. So here is an opportunity for us to say, okay, I'm gonna create this microservice with some default properties and push it to all the different nodes where it needs to run. And anytime I need to override it, all I need to do is put another application or properties next to it. So we have one step more overridable configuration, one step more flexibility in the way you can configure how these properties work. So you can easily imagine the same jar file going to multiple places and then different hosts, different servers have different application or properties in that same path as the root jar file. So different hosts will have different values configured for that same properties file. Okay, so this is another way in which you can override the configuration. But hang on, there's more. What you can do is not only specify this overrides as an external application or properties file, you can actually specify overrides using command line arguments, okay? So I can do something like this, dash dash, and then key equals value, okay? So I can override the same my greeting equals, let me call this, hello world from command line argument. Okay, so now what's gonna happen is Spring is going to do the same thing. It's gonna take the application or properties from the jar. It's gonna override it with application or properties in the same path as the jar. 
And then on top of that, it's going to apply anything that's passed in using command line. So you can have one more layer of overrideability and flexibility when it comes to configuring it. So you can also think of this as another way in which you can have different hosts provide different values, even without having an application.properties file. You can have this just be command line arguments and then have uh, whatever is running the jar file on the server, right? Have it pass in different values to these different things, and then it's going to take it up. Another thing that it looks up is system properties, which is very handy when you have um, your application running on hosts like Heroku, where the database connection and the you know credentials are all system properties. So these system properties are directly available in your configuration. And when you use the at value annotation, it looks up system properties as well. So all that is accessible to you in your Spring Boot application directly just by using the at value annotation. How you provide it might vary from your core application or properties file, an external file or a command line argument or a system property, but the way to access it and inject it into your code is using the at value annotation and that's consistent throughout. So there you have it. There are a lot of different sources where Spring actually looks up values in your property file, and there are different levels in which you can override them. I'm going to link in this tutorial description to a place which lists all the different ways in which you can override this. We've looked at a bunch of them, which are the most common ones, but there are some other sources that you should know, so you should look it up as well. So check that out. And in the next tutorial, Let's look at the at value annotation that we've used. This is actually super powerful and there are a bunch of tricks that you really should know if you're using this at value annotation. So in the next tutorial, let's look at some of those tricks that you should be knowing when you're working with Spring Boot configuration.